this Angelo with A Your Emotive, continuing our part two for the DOS system with EIS and EZL. Let's continue. Now, we'll peek into the version of DOS, such as DOS 2 and DOS 3. How can one recognize if it's a DOS 2 or DOS 3? It is important that you can recognize the systems by simply looking at, let's say, the key fob. Understanding the recognition and differences of these two separate systems will increase a knowledge base that will, at times, make you look smarter, because you are. There are two versions of DOS, DOS 2 and DOS 3. Version 2 generally uses that rectangular fob and has a mechanical key to operate the ignition switch, such as that. This is the style key used on, let's say, a 163 chassis, the M-Class vehicle. Version 3 almost exclusively uses a tapered fob key with an infrared surface that has no metal blade for the ignition switch, like that. The front of this is a lens because it uses infrared technology. The exception to this rule is that in model year 2002, the 163 chassis M class uses DOS 3 even though it retains that rectangular key fob and also the blade for the ignition key. The main difference between DOS 2 and DOS 3 is the way the key is validated or authorized for anti-theft protection. Now in the DOS 2, they use what's called an AAM, which is an acronym for All Activity Module and is used strictly on the M-Class chassis, the ML versions of the vehicle. The EIS acronym for the electronic ignition switch. DOS 3, the key ID is actually transmitted over the CAN, where the MESFI validates it. For other models with DOS 3 that use the infrared interface, the EIS reads and then transmits this ID as there is no dedicated DOS in these vehicles, although it is still referred to as DOS. There was also an original DOS version that did not use a two-way communication rolling code system. That right there, my friends, is a picture of a general EIS with DOS 3. The power for the DOS functions comes from the electronic coil mounted in that ignition switch housing and supplied by inductive current to the circuitry in the key fob. For DOS 3 vehicles, except for the 163, the transfer of data between the EIS and that key fob EEPROM is performed via an infrared signal. Just remember, the hardware is the EIS into which that is a programmed key is inserted. But the key is not a key in a traditional sense. It's more like a plastic puzzle piece, which fits into the socket in the dashboard. The key has a sequential code which rolls on each time it's used so the car cannot be stolen. So EIS checks the key, asks the electronic steering lock or the ESL if it's happy with the key. If the ESL says okay, it then asks the engine ECU if it agrees that this is the authorized key, to put it in simple terms. Since there is no keyblade to unlock the ignition switch, the release of both the ignition switch and the steering column is now performed electronically. DOS must validate the key through the infrared data exchange first. Here's a tip. Part of my servicing of these keys was the polish, the front of that lens every time I serviced the car. I had a small little buffer wheel with plastic polish. 
and I would polish that key for the customer as, you know, they keep that key in their pocket or keep it in their purse or keep it where they shouldn't be keeping it, therefore scratching that lens. So part of the service was to keep that lens clean and scratch-free. So that covers session two of the drive authorization. We'll move on to part three here shortly. This is Angelo with A Your Motive, and again, thanks for attending.